So as we can see on this picture is the thalamus. The thalamus is, uh, um, remember it is always excited. That's why it's represented by a lightning bolt. It is always excited and what it will do is that it will stimulate the cortex, the motor cortex, to produce movement. Okay, so since the thalamus is always excited, it will always stimulate the cortex and we will always move. What happens if that is the case? Even if you want to sleep, you continuously are, uh, you, you are continuously moving because the, the thalamus is always excited. Do we want that to happen? Of course not, right? Because uh, you will be tired. You will be very, very tired if you are constantly moving. So this is the function of the basal ganglia. Okay, so if um, it needs to be inhibited, so the thalamus needs to be inhibited in order for us not to constantly be in motion. So what um, what inhibits the thalamus? So we have here what we call the globus pallidus internus (GPI). Globus pallidus internus. This is what will inhibit the thalamus. Now the globus pallidus internus will produce a neurotransmitter that is inhibitory, and that is GABA. If GABA is produced, it will then inhibit the thalamus. So if the thalamus is inhibited, it will not be able to stimulate the cortex. Therefore, there will be no movement. Okay? So if uh, what inhibits the thalamus, the answer to that is the globus pallidus internus. So that is very basic that I want you to understand. Now, um, there are uh, two hormones that we need to understand. Uh, GABA is inhibitory while glutamate is excitatory. Meaning, if there is GABA um, inhibitory, there is an inhibitory uh, neurotransmitter. It will inhibit the globus pallidus internus. So, represented by this red color. If this is inhibited, will it be able to produce GABA? It will not be able to produce GABA. Therefore, if there is no inhibitory motor neuron, or inhibitory neurotransmitter rather, then the thalamus will be activated. It will then activate the cortex and there will be movement. Okay. Now, um, the basal ganglia focuses on modulating input to the globus pallidus internus. So that is the focus of the basal ganglia. It wants to control what is happening with the globus pallidus internus. So it, it, if we want to move, then it has to be uh, inhibited. If we want to be um, to be not in motion, then it has to be activated. So here you can ex we can excite the globus pallidus internus with glutamate. Naman on the other hand, if there is glutamate, then we can excite the globus pallidus internus. Sorry. So here, if there is glutamate, um. Uh, and uh, we can excite then the globus pallidus internus. If this is excited, meaning it can produce GABA. If it produces GABA, the GABA will inhibit the thalamus. Therefore, if the thalamus is inhibited, will there be movement? No, diba? there will be no movement. So this, what then produces the, uh, the glutamate, neurotransmitter glutamate is the subthalamic nucleus. So I want you to remember that. So the subthalamic nucleus. So the subthalamic nucleus is also activated by the striatum. But first we go here with the direct pathway. All right. So from the direct pathway, the striatum, we have the striatum, it will then produce acetylcholine which is another neurotransmitter and this in turn will cause the production of GABA. If GABA is present, which is inhibitory, it will inhibit the globus pallidus internus. And the globus pallidus internus will not be able to produce GABA and it will not be able to inhibit the thalamus. Therefore, will there be movement? Yes. Now, on the other hand, the subthalamic nucleus can also be stimulated by the striatum but in, in an indirect manner. So how? So we can see here um, that the striatum in the indirect pathway can will also produce acetylcholine. So... This is the direct pathway. Now we're talking about the indirect pathway. So if it produces acetylcholine, it will then stimulate the production of the neurotransmitter GABA, which is inhibitory. So this inhibitory neurotransmitter will inhibit the globus pallidus externus. So externus naman. 
globus pallidus externus. So if this is inhibited, what will happen? Globus pallidus internus will not be able to produce GABA. Therefore, it cannot inhibit the subthalamic nucleus. If there is no inhibition or there is less inhibition of the subthalamic nucleus, it will then produce glutamate. And if, if glutamate is produced, will it activate or inhibit the globus pallidus internus? It will cause the activation of globus pallidus internus. And if GPI is activated, anong produce niya? It will produce... GABA. And GABA is inhibitory. Will it be able to inhibit the thalamus? Yes. And if the thalamus is inhibited, will there be cortical movement? Wala. Diba? There will be no cortical movement as represented by this red color here. So that is the indirect pathway. So I hope we were able to understand this. Now, let's look at how dopamine will be in the picture so as we can see here or as uh, as we w have said earlier the dopamine is released from the substantia nigra pars compacta and dopamine is always pro movement i want you to remember that dopamine is pro movement if there is dopamine ibig sabihin uh, uh, it's a neurotransmitter that will produce movement so how does it work so as we can see here there there are two receptors for dopamine. We have a D1 receptor. So let's talk about the D1 receptor first. So if the D1 receptor is attached to a dopamine neurotransmitter, it will activate acetylcholine. It will release acetylcholine in the direct pathway. Therefore, it will release GABA, which is an inhibitory uh, neurotransmitter. It will inhibit the globus pallidus internus. And if this is inhibited, what happens, it will not be able to produce GABA. And if there is no GABA neurotransmitter, there is no inhibition of the thalamus. Therefore, movement will occur. So again, dopamine is pro-movement. Now, there is that is what we call your direct pathway. Okay? So direct pathway involves the globus pallidus internus directly. Now, when we talk about the indirect pathway, we have another receptor which is called the D2 receptor. It's also a receptor for dopamine. Now, if there is a dopamine attached to the D2 receptor, meaning we want movement to occur, sabi natin dopamine is pro-movement. So, dopamine will then release acetylcholine. And if, it's, if acetylcholine, I'm sorry, this will then, um, the dopamine... Well then, since it is pro-movement, I'm sorry, since it is pro-movement, it will inhibit the release of acetylcholine in the indirect pathway. So, uh, if acetylcholine is not produced, it will not be able to release the neurotransmitter GABA. So, there will be no inhibition for the globus pallidus internus. That In that case, the globus pallidus internus, since it is not inhibited, it will produce GABA. And if GABA is produced, this will then inhibit the subthalamic nucleus from producing glutamate. And if there is no glutamate, it will not be able to excite the globus pallidus internus. Therefore, if this is not excited, it is inhibited. Globus pallidus internus will not produce the neurotransmitter GABA. And if there is no GABA, meaning it cannot inhibit the thalamus, the thalamus then will be able to produce movement cortical movement okay so those are the two pathways for our basal ganglia and how it um, modulates thalamic outflow which controls cortical movement